The Word of God giveth light. And, and we can expect when we study the Word to see things clearer. Because in light is where you see things clearer. In darkness, things get a little musty and misty. But in the light, things get clearer. And, and His Word bringeth light unto our hearts. And so today, as, as we begin to seek to know the, you know, the problems that are, that are around us and that face us, how beautiful it is to know that we can also learn uh, how to be an overcomer. Uh, on page 61 of your teaching syllabus, we will be dealing with today's lesson, which is how do you cope with the unknown? How do you cope with the unknown? Uh, I presume it's one of the greatest problems that a human person, uh, beginning with Adam and Eve, have had to confront. Millions of humans are haunted by the unknown. And it's amazing that when you get into the uh, countries that we call heathen or pagan, uh, that it haunts them more than it does uh, other, other people. It does not haunt Christians at all. Uh, but uh, the less they know about the supreme being, the more they're haunted by the unknown and afraid of the unknown. They, they have their soothsayers, they have their fortune tellers, which make millions of dollars off of them, promising uh, to delve into the unknown in their behalf so that they can know something about the unknown. They all want to know, what will tomorrow bring? What's going to happen to me next year? The problem of the unknown is possibly man's greatest problem. After death, where in the world shall I be? And, and they, they, they want to know. Uh, our parents uh, help bring this on us when we, when we are, are young. They say, if you go in there, a booger bear will get you. And they know there's nothing there. They're just trying to keep them out of trouble. And then they, the children become afraid of the unknown. They don't know what's in there, and, and they become afraid of it. And so a, a lot of this is brought upon us by, by our own selves. But God, in no place in the Bible, teaches us to be afraid of that which we cannot understand. The, we are, we're to have no fear. God wants us to face the future or to face anything that we don't understand with courage in our hearts and to know that we are conquerors. Can you say amen? Uh, we're reading Psalm 91, verse 5. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Now, now nights when people have most terror, and, and so it says, But you, God's people, are not afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. That's warfare, open warfare in the daytime. Nor for the pestilence, that walketh in darkness. You, you can't see sickness, you know. And many people say, I want to catch it, I want to catch it, you know. And, and they don't yet know what's around to get caught. But it being an unknown factor, then they are afraid of it. The pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Uh, sickness and things like that, that's right out there in the daylight. Cancer, that so many are afraid of. Then... We must have a, a place in God where we can cope with the unknown. There are people that actually have to go into psychiatric care because of their fear of the unknown. They just, they just uh, can't face what they don't understand, what they can't see and what they don't know. They just can't face it. But I believe that God can put something in your heart to give you fulfillment that it don't matter what's out there, you're going to face it in Jesus' name. What is the unknown? The unknown is the inexperienced. What is unknown to one person is not unknown to another person. And what one person fears, another person does not fear. We, we do not all fear the same thing. And the unknown is not the unknown to equally among us. It's the inexperienced. We hadn't been there. Sometimes it's the far away. You know, it, it is unknown because it's across the country from us. It's unknown because it's in another nation across the ocean. And, and so because it's the far away, it is unknown to us and we, we fear the thing. We, we fear the unknown. Sometimes it's just the future. Because the future is closed to us, which is good for us, then we, we have a great fear of it, simply because it hasn't happened yet. And a lot of people cross bridges that are not there. I don't know how they get across. But they're out there walking around in areas that they don't understand and don't know, and they're, they're afraid of it. 
What is the unknown? Many times it's the unstudied. That if a person had given time to study it, then it is known. And it's only unknown to them because they haven't prepared themselves to understand it. And if it's unknown simply because you haven't studied about it, for sure you shouldn't be afraid of it. You, you shouldn't say, well, I'm afraid of that when it, all you need is some enlightenment on the thing. Many times the unknown is the untried. It's only unknown because you hadn't tried it. Once you've tried it, it's not the unknown anymore. You find that you can do it. And so you have no reason to have fear of it simply because you haven't tried it. Somebody else has tried it. Somebody else has done it. And they're not afraid of it. And simply because you haven't tried it is no reason for it to torment you. I want to tell you one thing. Torment does not come from God. If there's torment in your life relative to anything, you just better believe me, if you look far enough, you'll see the devil hiding behind it, that God does not create situations like that. Many times unknown, the unknown uh, comes from an, an evil background. It's your point number two. The heathen people usually equate the unknown with evil. If it's unknown to them, it's evil. And that, that isn't true. I mean, because it's unknown does not make it evil. It can be very good, just, you just don't understand it, you don't know about it yet. If you had never heard the word ice cream, and you had never tasted ice cream, and someone told you that'll kid you if you ever touch it, well, you know, that it really isn't true. That when you get one, you want another. How many found that out? But you see, being unknown does not make it evil. And so you, you mustn't think of everything that I don't understand must be bad. That is not true. And so the, but the heathen people, uh, in, in their ignorance, anything that's un, unknown to them and they don't understand, then it's, it's, it's bound to be evil. Many beautiful things can come to us from the world of the unknown. There are people here that you didn't know about the Holy Spirit and you'd heard bad things about it. Oh, if you ever get that, you'll go crazy. And you didn't, you just woke up at that time. <laughs> it just came with a new relationship. But there are possibly millions of Americans today that are desiring more of God, and because it's an unknown factor, they're afraid of it. There are people in our own community here that would just be glad to have the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the power of God, but because it's an unknown quality or quantity, then they say, oh no, I'm afraid of it, simply because it's unknown. Once you have gotten into it, you'll find that there are beautiful things in the unknown Let's get acquainted with the unknown. And, and uh, let's never fear the unknown. Your point number three says the unknown in danger. In the olden days, men said, if you go that way, you'll fall off the end of the earth. And a lot of people who think for things unknown, it's a dangerous thing. That if you go to do something that you don't understand, that you're, you're, sure, you're sure in trouble. And very slowly, man had to find that he didn't fall off the end of the, end of the earth if he went, if he went west. He just went west and he came back east. And then he said, well, you didn't fall off of anything. There might be many areas in your own life where you told, if you go that way, you'll get hurt. And it may not be true at all. God does not want us, simply because we don't understand a thing, to fear it. And that brings us to that point four. It says fear and the unknown. Fear and unbelief, they, they shatter your efforts to enter into new areas areas that you haven't been in before. And so we must not permit the devil to keep us out of good things, new things, simply because we don't understand them. Some people cannot move to another city because it's unknown over there. They haven't been there before and they, they tremble before it. It's an unknown experience to them. Some people can't even change churches. They, they, they're so afraid that if they move into another church, they don't know what might happen to them. And so fear, relative to the unknown, can maybe keep you from many things. Uh, they, they say that there's some boys and girls that are afraid to go with each other. Well, you can't get married if you don't. Are you here? There's some people afraid to get married. Well, a lot of us have tried it. Are you still here or not? I want you to know that a lot of people are not married because of fear. And it's the unknown quantity in it that, that causes them to draw back, to draw back from it. Let's look at point five. It says weakness and the unknown. The opposite of growth 
is sameness and death. Evading the unknown is weakness, and it can keep you from knowing new friends, new things, new ideas. There's weakness in not accepting the unknown, and it can destroy us, destroy our happiness, destroy our lives. It's not strength when you tremble and say, I can't do that, I don't understand it, I don't know it, I don't know where, I don't know what had happened to me if I did that. Anywhere you go on the face of this earth, they're beautiful friends. I've been in over a hundred countries, found friends in every one I've ever been in. Beautiful, beautiful friends, you see. And so there's no need at all for us to be weak when we can be strong. And a fear of the unknown will make you weak in that area. And God doesn't want you to be. One of the greatest aspects of this is your point number six. It says prejudice and the unknown. You know, prejudice is an arch enemy. It is a destroyer. When you have within you prejudice that you're determined not to know the unknown, then you're in bad trouble. I got all I want. I don't have to look into that. I'm satisfied right here. I don't have to go there. I'm satisfied with what I'm doing. I don't have to do something better. When we have prejudice, and then there's an unknown factor there, and we miss it because we're prejudiced to it, that's not really living. That's not really living. God doesn't want us to live that way. As far as possible in our lives, we should keep our spirits open to understand something new every day. I personally learn something new every day of my life. I do. All of us should. Every day of our life should be a new experience. Because every day we do live in the unknown, whether we like it or not. There's not much you can do about the unknown except jump in there and get to know it. But if you have prejudice against it, then you don't have any hope of learning much. Just because a blessing somebody else has is new to you, you don't have to be prejudiced against it. You don't have to say, well, that must not be right. My grandma didn't have it that way. Well, if your grandma was living today, she'd have it that way because she'd be exploring. And an exploring mind moves over into new things and into new blessings and new authority and new power. I believe there's a world of unknown for every one of us that can make us ten times what we are if we get into it and stop letting the devil keep us out of it. Sometimes, as your point seven says, the unknown is a wilderness of void, a wilderness of emptiness. It is wrong to say that there's emptiness in the unknown because it might be fullness there. The unknown has spontaneity. That means it can just rise up quick and, and, and you know, right when you're not expecting it, something beautiful can rise up. And you can find so many things if you penetrate outside your own little circle that you understand today into something greater. But now, I want to tell you something. Your natural man don't want to do it. Your natural person doesn't want to do it. Your natural person wants to live in, in the little bit that it knows right now. But your spiritual person wants to say, I want more. I'm reaching for more. I want better. I am not satisfied. I'm reaching out. And then you have to reach into what you don't know in order to get it. And that is the world of the unknown. If we, if we stay in a static condition day after day and week after week and year after year, we, we never grow. We could ask, have you been teaching for 30 years? Or have you been teaching one year 30 times? That's the way some of us live, you know. Have you been teaching for 30 years or have you been teaching one year 30 times? that you're doing the same thing now that you were 30 years ago. You hadn't gotten out of the same rut you were in then. You haven't moved into anything remarkable or beautiful. Now you can say that to preachers. Have you been preaching 20 years or 30 years? Or have you been doing the same thing for 30 years? There's a new world for all of us, and God's trying to urge us to get out there into it. And age has nothing to do with it. It doesn't matter what your age is, you can, you can find something. The world is not sour. It's a beautiful world. Let's, let's enjoy it. Can you say amen? amen? To avoid the unknown brings a spiritual and a moral paralysis to you. That means you're just locked in. Locked in. When we avoid 
the unknown. Suppose, suppose you're dropped in a foreign land with no money. How would you meet the unknown in your concrete? How would you do it? Would you, would you just say, well, I'm starved to death then? No, you wouldn't. You'd start learning a few words and talking to somebody about something other than you'd, you'd, you'd find out that you could communicate and you'd get what you needed. You never learn. You never learn from success, but you do from failure. And that's what we're afraid of is the failure, you see. If you know how to do a thing and you do a thing, you do a thing, you're not growing very much. But if you're doing something you don't know, don't know how to do, even if you fail, well, you learn that you failed, that's interesting. And then if you do it a second time, you do it right. And that's exciting. Can you say amen? A great man always studied the unknown. Albert Einstein devoted his whole life exploring the unknown. That's all he ever did. He did it for science. He said the most beautiful thing we can experience is the unknown. That's his quotation. And because of that, you have atomic energy. Because of that, you have many other very remarkable things. Because one man said, I will live in the unknown. I've heard scientists say that when he was speaking, that after he'd been talking a few minutes, they didn't even know what he's talking about. They couldn't even follow him. You see, what? He was way out there in the unknown, exploring and discovering and finding things that we use every day now, you see, in, in our lives. Madame Curie, I used to study a lot about her. She was born Polish, married a Frenchman named Curie, and she's the one that gave birth to radium. She, she discovered radium. Oh, not like you might think in a laboratory. It was a barn. It was an old garage building. She had babies, and she, she made a thing where she could rock the baby with a foot like this so she could keep working. And she worked with radium and didn't know how to contain it like we do today in, inside of solid metal. And by the time she'd finished with it, her, both of her hands were like the paws of a dog that had been eaten up by radium. But she worked in that world of the unknown until what will we do today without it, you see? What in the world could we live in modern world without it? But if this little woman hadn't have delved into the area of the unknown at great sacrifice, her husband was a scientist too, he couldn't hardly get her to bed at all. She just wanted to work and to work and to work and to work night and day. And she came up with this remarkable substance called radium that all of us use all the time, you see. She found it in the world of the unknown. In Florida, you can go to Thomas Edison's house and see how he thrived on the unknown. These incandescent bulbs that you see here, he failed 10,000 times thinking he had it. He just believed that some way or another you could bring light where there was no light that you could cause a wire to do something that would make a light. Other people laughed at him and said, the candle's good enough for me. Other people laughed at him and said, you ought to be content with a kerosene lamp. And we have these bright lights today because Thomas Edison wouldn't give up. Sometimes he'd work for eight or 10 or 12 hours. His wife would bring him a sandwich. He'd lay down on the cot for 10 minutes and sleep and come right back and keep at it. Where was he working? In the world of the unknown. He didn't know the world, but he believed it was something out there. Pioneers pierced the unknown in the open the American frontier. Brother, when they went west, they didn't know what they was gonna find next. But they opened our American frontier. You said, that's all open. There are a million things not open yet. What we're trying to get you to do is get yourself open. We live in a, in a universe where we have dark spots in space that suck suns into them, seven times bigger than the sun that shines on this earth. And they don't know where they go when they're sucked into the deep holes of space. Somebody will find out one day, looking into the unknown. Now these that are in the natural, also in the spiritual. Here's Abraham and your point B. 
He discovered the unknown. He knew the unknown as to when Sodom and Gomorrah were going to be destroyed. God told him by prophecy how it would be destroyed. In Genesis 18, 16, And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? And so here was a man that got to know the unknown, got to understand the unknown, and knew what was going to happen, you see, before it happened. This also means, well, it's your next point, point nine. The unknown can become known through spiritual gifts. The gift of the word of wisdom is when you know the future. The gift of the word of knowledge is when you know, when you know the present far away from you. And we'd like to take you into that, but those are large studies that you'd have to... But it is the world of the unknown, and there are millions of Christians not in it because they're afraid of the unknown. And until we can get you to know that's the place you ought to be, learning something new every day, then you cannot be blessed in the world of the unknown. And so you have the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit there telling you, how do you handle, what do you do with the world of the unknown? You say, now how do you cope with this situation? How do you get into it to where it really means something to you? How, how can you get to say, I'm not afraid of the unknown? And, and you move into it. The unknown can be conquered. How? By study or by walking into it? I made a policy when I was a, a young person that if somebody came to me and said, if you go in that door, there's something going to get you, that I didn't run from the door and I didn't open the door and peep in, but I kicked it. Get it open. Walked in and there was nothing there. Now that's the way the unknown can be for you. There are people here today frustrated by the unknown quantity. You say, what shall I do? I've never done that before. And we, we meet it every day. You might want to buy a house and say, I don't know how to buy a house. Well, I'd get somebody that did, like a lawyer, and let him buy the thing for me and see that all the papers are right. The next time you can do it yourself because you have then conquered the area of the unknown that you didn't know about. There are many aspects of living that we get cheated of because we haven't, nobody taught us about them yet. We had not had any experience in there yet. And in our spiritual world, it's more than, the, more than in the natural world. In our spiritual world, some people never get further than point one, they get saved. And they never do get any further than, they don't search the word. Search the word to find out things you don't know. It's your world of the unknown. Now we're living in the last days. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. Without a doubt, he's coming soon. It scares some people pink. They, they, they don't want, they say, don't talk about that. That scares me. I might lose my job. Yeah, you're not going to lose your job. You're going to go up from it. Yeah, let them run it the best they can. We're all going up in the rapture. But if it comes to a spiritual thing of the unknown, that there are people afraid of healing the same way. Afraid of healing the same way. They, they, they said, well, now, 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 I don't know about healing. And I'm afraid of healing. And so they, they, they back away from it because they don't understand it. Now, there's some things you will never fully understand. I'll give you an example. Two men walk down here to the front. Both of them are sick. Both of them are equally sick. One is a good Christian and the other is a sinner. I pray for both of them. Are you here? Yeah, the sinner gets healed. And, and, and the Christian man don't get healed. Man, you say, that's not fair. You're not the judge. You don't know anything about it. You say, well, how did it happen that way? Because a sinner said, I'm here to give my heart to you. I'm here to give my life to you. And, and, and right now, I know that I'm healed. And the Christian man says, I've been serving you 24 years. Get busy and do this for me. <laughs> and God says, I don't save. I don't heal you on the basis of 24 years. I heal you on the basis of faith and asking forgiveness of the wrongs you've done and cleaning up your inside and saying, I believe, I believe. I heal you on the basis of I believe. You see? 
Now that's an area of the unknown for you. You pray for them both and everybody present and say, well, the, the Christian gets healed first. No. The man of faith gets healed first. You, you get what you believe for. But now in believing, you're in the world of the unknown. You just, you have to leave it with God. Just as God, it's all yours there. I tell you, it's delightful to live in the unknown. It's exciting. You don't know what's going to happen next. But you know it's going to be good if you're walking with God. But until we're willing to plunge out there. I, I've had many preachers tell me, you know, I'd pray for the sick, but I'm afraid they wouldn't get healed. Well, don't pray for them, honey, because they sure won't. You, you've taken care of that before you started. You didn't believe. The Lord taught me years ago, and you listen carefully to this, that when I prayed for people that I did not heal anybody, that he's responsible for all of it. And if they get healed, I didn't do it. And if they don't get healed, I didn't do it. Man, that'll heal your ulcers. <laughs> Paul said in Romans 1 and 15, I am ready. What was he ready for? To go into a place he didn't know. To go into a place he'd never been before. If you are ready to enter the unknown, I want to be real firm with you today. We are just entering a time when God is going to do more spiritually than ever before in the history of mankind. Miracles that you won't have any record of such a thing before. 